All right. Hey, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Bye. another fun episode of Kids uh, Kids on Bikes, as opposed to Bikes on Kids, which I have a bad tendency to say. Um, <laughs> you may have noticed we're not on Wednesday. However, we may have recorded this on Wednesday. Uh, we're doing this in solidarity with the, the Twitch blackout that sort of went around Twitter over the last few days. Uh, really, it's about shining a light on one of the biggest streaming platforms really that they've been turning a blind eye towards misbehavior, whether it's either systemic racism or sexism or other allegations. And so we just want to stand with those that don't have a voice. And so we shifted a a little bit just to make sure that they're heard. And so hopefully you will have fun with the rest of this, the show. Um, We'll have some folks in the chat to interact with you and uh, have some fun. Whee! Yeah. Take it away, Hal. Okay, so uh, we did our session zero last week. We pretty much finished making the characters up. Uh, we had a few things left to do that uh, have been done since then. You guys can't uh, see the screen, but it does say I did do campaign one, episode 0.5. Okay. Uh, I think the characters are mostly done. Uh, What we're going to do is just kind of go over how we finished up the characters, and then uh, I think we're going to get our feet wet and and dive right into uh, uh, the world of Eindy as we began developing last week. Uh, So what we've already done is we've already uh, picked all the tropes that we want to play, and we have names for the characters. Uh, we uh, pull up a character sheet now. We have really uh, cool character oh. art. Yeah, we do. Yes. Uh, I, I meant to uh, bring up to you guys. Maybe we should do the the nerdy shit. You know, plug in that author for or uh, the, yeah. plug in that artist who did the the artwork. So, Danny, Danny you want to so, you want to step in? And... So uh, that artist is Lynn Redder. She is. Um, I met her last year at Gen Con in person. She is working on her own uh, web comic series um, called Alistair, Alistair the Bro Paladin. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll include some information for you to uh, look her up and see more about what she's doing, including her art station and where you might be able to support her on her own Patreon, etc. But yes, uh, brilliant artist. Uh, this style that she is uh, that she used for our characters here is the same style she's pretty much using for Alistair, uh, but she's uh, this is you know she's not a one trick pony she's uh, got a lot of styles so awesome and yeah there it's it's pretty cool artwork I'm very very impressed with what she got for you and so fast too yeah yes. Yeah, Danny's been really pumped about this all week. It's been like, describe your character. What kind of backpack are they wearing? What do they look like? What's their hair color? And then like less than a week later, here we go. We have awesome artwork. <laughs> What's the mystery monster yep. look like? I was like, but it's a mystery. <laughs> and, and also the theme song that you heard uh, right before we went live, uh, Danny wrote that as well. So uh, Danny's yep. Danny's super excited about this show. Some black side of your face. <laughs> did did okay. you just poop yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Which is exciting. <laughs> Bruh. Okay, so back to the characters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what I think we should do is everybody talk about uh, the fear and the motivation that you picked for your character, uh, as well as the what you decided to go in your backpack and then the two trope specific questions. Uh, and then after that, we'll talk about uh, the powered character and then we'll get going. Uh, so I can't see the Twitch stream since we're not streaming. So I guess we'll start with uh, Brianna who's upper left on my discord window. Hello, I'm Brianna Valentine. Um, and in kids on bikes, I'm, I almost said bikes on kids too. So now I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> In a Sorry, kids on... making it a thing. <laughs> the bike I am playing is. No. <laughs> I am playing Andy Tully. Um, Andy is 12. 
Um, so he gets the the child features like like quick healing and plus one to some of our stats, which is cool. Um, Andy's fear is um appearing weak and powerless. Um, he's got some stuff in his, his background that might come up in game that um really he doesn't. He does not want to appear weak and powerless in any sense. And anybody, and that kind of ties into his motivation of anybody who's who's made him feel that way. He wants to get revenge on, and he wants to be in control of of every situation and person that he can because uh, he doesn't want to feel that way again. Um, our our character questions. What do we have? Uh, what? Oh, like why do I want to be a bully? Right. Um, that. Yeah. That honestly is pretty much the same thing. Um, is to to have control, to have the power, um, and to be able to um, have the the most um, powerful image of of himself. So it's going to be really interesting having him around teenagers because suddenly he's going to be like, "Wait a second, I don't. It my power is gone. What?" <laughs> um, so that'll be really cool. Um, and then. Uh, the second question was, how does bullying make him feel? Um, it it makes I th- I think honestly that it made him feel a little guilty at first, but he's learned to push that down because uh, for the greater good of of his needs and his wants. Um, so <laughs> um, doubling down, it's I'm I'm the bully. It's like you know what I'm I'm sorry. Uh, this is what I want, and this is what's happening. So sorry, um, I'm not sorry. Yeah. Yep, sorry, not sorry. So um, we'll see how that develops over time. Okay, and then tell us about your backpack. The Yeah, the backpacks, we we <laughs> talked about this offline. They can be metaphorical or they can be physical. And, of course, the things in your backpack uh, mechanically are just the things that you, you just always have with you. So they can also be metaphorical or physical. Okay, so I have to, I have to read this. Um, so... Things that are, um, I guess, metaphorical, not actually things you can like hold and stuff. Um, he definitely um, has a lot of a lot of stamina, uh, a lot of a lot of grit, a lot of angst and anger, <laughs> um, and yeah. um, there there's a lot of that. Um, but in terms of physical things, uh, he's got an eraser with some stab holes and maybe some teeth marks in it. Um, some really screwed up textbooks and some folded up homework, uh, a notebook, a stolen Tamagotchi from his sister, um, exactly one pen, um, some, <laughs> some, Nint- <laughs> some Nintendo 64 game cards, a Game Boy, um, a Bic lighter, um, which he kind of plays with and, and fidgets with, um, almost, almost aimlessly. Um, he's got some bottom of the bag cold fries, um, because his, his backpack kind of perpetually smells like McDonald's, so that's probably why. Um, he's got a ring pop and uh, some some stolen uh, pogs uh, that that Sarah kind of mentioned <laughs> last week. A, a bunch of them. They're just kind of clattering around in there. So that's what we got. So does he like to play with them, or he just likes them because he he, he was able to take them? Uh, I think he secretly likes to to play with them, but like when. When he's got them, he just has a collection. He's like, yeah, I've got them, and I'll steal yours, too. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Danny. So, let's see. Nikki, she is, uh, you know, she's got some uh, some fears and motivations, I guess. Yeah, I wrote those down. Uh, fear. So, uh, being, being a, a military kid and just always kind of moving every couple of years or so, Uh, Her big fear is that she will never have any deep friendships, uh, that she'll never uh, just everywhere she goes, you know, she sees that people have these deep friendships, people that have known each other for years uh, and that uh, she'll never have that. Yeah. Um, Besties since kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, Her motivation is uh, to release the hottest rap album out of Indy. Um that kind of uh that's that's the 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 literal but the kind of the bigger picture is is that to to do something to create something that uh will create a positive visibility around her so that people can hey see that she's actually cool and that uh she is worth liking um let's see what what else some uh, no, uh your questions right you you asked us questions why why is she happier f- uh, fending for herself 
Um, well, it's something that she's learned to do. Um, she is in a single parent household uh, and, uh, and also just other people let you down. Uh, maybe if they were friends forever, they wouldn't. But, uh, you know, she never really knows people more than a couple of years and, and they will let you down. Um, what part of the cool kid life does she wish she had just a little bit? Well, the, the, the friends part, uh, people who are cool, they tend to have folks that are that are there for them, willing to do stuff for them. Um, and, yeah, and this is back that, in the 90s before social media, you know, all your friends from previous military bases, yeah. are, you know, they got to write snail mail to keep in touch. Yeah. And who does that really? So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, cool people tend to have friends, tend to have hangers on, tend to have people that look up to them. Uh, and, uh, you know, she wish she could have that. Uh, her backpack, she is uh, she wears a uh, just a simple camouflage you know, backpack, Jansport. Um, inside, she's got maybe a couple of her school books, but most importantly, she's got her uh, microphone and recorder uh, so that she can record sounds and samples and people saying stupid things so that she can put them in music. Uh, she's got a little drum machine, an old Roland TR-707, uh, her notepad that she uses to write her uh, poetry or rhymes, hip hop stuff into, and um, spray paint. She's got a couple of cans of spray paint because she's uh, she's been known to tag a few buildings, a few, uh, few underpasses, et cetera. Um, also, not necessarily inside of her backpack, but uh, she's always got her yellow uh, Sony Walkman uh, and her over-the-ears headphones. Uh, she's often just in her own headspace um, listening to, to music. So. Awesome. Okay, Sarah. I knew you were going to call on me, and my dogs just started howling. All right, should we come back to you? No. All right, let's do Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, I am playing Val Young. Uh, she's uh, playing the trope of a funny sidekick, uh, and so... I've been sort of tossing around a couple different ideas around fear. Uh, one of them could be as like esoteric as like always being the sidekick. Um, although I went with something a little bit more tangible, which is Val is very, very afraid of basements. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> good, good fun stuff. <laughs> um, and, and her motivation though, um, like a lot of her drive is around her ability to tell stories and to, to, paint the picture of what's going on and so she's you know in the the school newspaper and and so her motivation is to win the nspa story of the year award which i had to go look up what nspa was which is national scholastic press association wow and so yeah that's Buddy, really what drives investigative wow. journalist absolutely uh and so her questions uh so the her her trope question, what do you do that always lightens your friend's moods? Um, kind of to follow the, the journalistic uh, point, uh, I think that she would always try to turn whatever the group is doing into some sort of funny headline. And uh, <laughs> usually it will fall a little flat, but it always makes an effort uh, to put it into some big, bold words <laughs> that will grab clickbait before there was clickbait. <laughs> um, and then the other question is, is what what does being a sidekick frustrate you with? And I think uh, she feels like she's forgotten a lot in the group. Like when they talk about the group, they're always referring to the other people. Um, oh, oh, and and Val, Val's there, right? And so that that ends up being frustrating for her. Uh, so what's in my okay. backpack? So my backpack has a notepad with fancy mechanical pencil. It's her favorite mechanical pencil. 0.9 lead. Uh, also has a bunch of ca uh, camera film canisters. Uh, some of them are filled with quarters because uh, sometimes you need to go get something from, something from the vending machine or maybe go use a pay phone. Pay phone. Um, and some of them have extra film just in case. Uh, okay. She also has a bologna sandwich because you might get hungry when you're out in the field. Um, it's better than day old fries. <laughs> Absolutely. Day. It's fresh blood. Yeah. <laughs> Week, month, month old. Yeah, day is generous. 
<laughs> and so, uh, but the other things that are much more like touchy feely, uh, she has a supportive uh, parents in her backpack, and also an, an annoying younger brother who is mom's favorite. Everyone with younger siblings knows that, yeah, they're always the parents' favorite. They get away with everything. Absolutely. <sighs> Yo, it has been a hot second since I had bologna. Like, <laughs> hot, like a hot second. <laughs> I'm so, I that's think I was odd. <laughs> Let's yeah. all uh, pause stream and go get ourselves some bologna. No there's, no, there's a reason we haven't. Like, actually, <laughs> so, so no. Well, fried bologna is good, but that's because you fry it. Do do your thing. Yo, do we I'm need gonna, a bologna break? I'm gonna go get some cold fries. I think. I think. I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I, there's those times you're very suggestible. I remember watching Hot Fuzz and we had to stop everything when the guy kept eating cake and we went to like Kroger at like 5 a.m. and got cake. <laughs> <laughs> this was the right decision. Clearly. Yeah. All right. So we can edit a break in now or later, whatever. But it's Sarah, <laughs> uh, tell us about Blaze's uh, character development since the session zero. Sure. His fears and motivate fears and motivations and uh, and whatnot. Sure. Um, by the way, Brianna, I expect to see our starting soon screen with a piece of bologna that comes into everyone's face and backs out. It is done. It is known. <laughs> it will happen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Switching over to uh, Blaze here. There he is. Okay. Um, so Blaze is the brutish jock. Uh, he's 16. Um, gets plus one to fight and run checks, which is great. Uh, he has a fear of uh, not being wanted or needed. He's used to being the best at everything. He has to be the best at everything or else it's uh, held against him at home. Um, so uh, not being um, important or wanted or needed is a huge fear for him. Um Let's see. So he's uh, big on brawn, fighting, grit. Um, those are his top qualities. Mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, rebellious because he's a teenager. Um, and then tough and heroic um, are my, my two other strengths there. Um, okay. Doesn't always, he wants to be the best. So if there's a challenge, like he has to take it. So I guess that's kind of confused for heroicism. <laughs> um, and then the flaws, um, he can be a little boastful, um, and a little petty, especially if he thinks someone else is, um, kind of showing him up or something. So, uh, can make some of those side comments and he's a little reckless because again, he's got to be the first to try things first to succeed. Um, so sometimes he can jump in without thinking, um, powers. Uh, so, uh, immediately. Oh, so I'm bonded to. Andy? Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll 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 cover that later. Gotcha. Okay. Uh so the the questions uh what is what does he get what satisfaction does he get from by being good at sports? Um his uh dad approves of him. It's not necessarily sports, like he likes sports, um, but it's like the thing that makes him most important in his dad's eyes. So um so that's uh why it matters so much to him. Um and what does your involvement with sports keep you from doing that you wish you could do? Take more dance classes. So his dad doesn't know he's taking ballet on the side. Um, so he's getting a little more dexterity and grace. Um, really enjoys it. Um, so in his backpack, he has the Adidas uh, backpack because, you know, status symbol there. Um, mm -hmm. And it's covered with stickers and pins and uh, iron-on patches and all the things that show everything he's done and been to and been included and he's got a uh, trapper keeper uh, in his backpack that has like homework sticking out of the sides, um, like so you can't zip it up or anything. Um, not speaking from experience. <laughs> Whatever season it is. So, how what season are we playing in? Uh, this is going to be shortly after the start of the new school year. Okay, so fall, so football season. Yeah. 
so has uh like some of uh like his football uh uh actually you know what just to throw around and practice whenever he gets a chance it's going to be a football in his bag he's got gatorade he's got protein bars um at the very bottom of his bag wrapped like really preciously uh in a plastic shopping bag is um his ballet slippers and uh pens and uh his wallet okay all right, so I, I do have a question for you about Blaze. Okay. Uh, since he, he had a, already talked about his his fear is not being wanted or needed. Is he, uh, and his father doesn't know about the ballet, but is he, does he mind if other people know he's taken ballet, or is that not a fear of his that he'd be found out of, by taking ballet classes? It's not necessarily the fear of ballet itself. Okay. It's the fear of being ostracized because of it, and again, like not right. being included or or thought as highly of um, okay. for it. So he does tend to keep it under wraps. Um, but like... But he's more worried about not being wanted. Yeah. Anymore. He's really okay. proud of his accomplishments in ballet. He's really proud sure. of it. But like, just doesn't talk about it. Sure. Okay. Does 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 he have ballet friends? Like, Because I'm thinking like in a, in a smallish town, you go to the ballet class. It, it seems like people would know but maybe like the other students at the ballet are like yeah. tickled that blaze is there so they um, just yeah it's like i'm blaze um i was able to finagle private lessons uh -huh. so okay. it's just me so and the you, teacher nobody okay. else has to know so you have okay. money money huh um, Fancy community college money, maybe. We, yeah. yeah we don't we don't have a ton of money we probably shouldn't be spending it on all the nice things but like it's a status symbol and that's really important to my family so but not your dad oh my my dad very much likes the status symbol he's the one that's spending okay. the stupid money on my adidas bag and everything else gotcha. okay okay all righty uh so uh everybody who's seen stranger things or et uh they know that there's that special character who has the 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 weird supernatural powers uh, so that's the character that is kind of jointly controlled by everybody, both the game master and each of the players. Uh, and in Kids on Bikes, that's called the powered character. So the powered character has a character sheet, you know, in the same style as the players do. Uh, but it's not a fully fleshed out character. Uh, it's going to be kind of jointly created and controlled. Uh, so as the game master, I pick... The high stat and the low stat, I've picked Flight to be the D20 for the power character uh, and Brawn to be the D4 stat. And uh, the other stats will just be picked by the players as they become relevant. Whoever is controlling the power character, when it needs to do a fight check, for example, is there, and if it hasn't been decided, they're going to pick what die it gets, so then that'll be settled for the rest of the game. Mm. Uh, now, whenever the uh, powered character uh, also has uh, psychic powers, which I'm going to reveal to you uh, as as they come up, you know, for dramatic tension purposes. Uh, but each of you are going to control one of those psychic powers, and you can uh, say this would be a great time for the powered character to do this thing that it can do, and you, and then you would take over the narration and describe power character attempting to do it uh in addition to the psychic powers there are personality traits and there are relationships to the group which i've already assigned a few of those to each of you uh, mm -hmm. so let me go flip through your characters in the case of val you know that the power character wants to bring the entire group to another realm called cybertropolis so whenever something along those lines would come up uh, or you think it'd be a good time for it to come up, you can assume control of the character and have it do whatever would be relevant there. Sarah says, let's go. Sarah says, let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Trouble. All right. Ooh. Yep. Uh, Andy, the, uh, this, the powered character never wants to be alone. So whenever that is relevant in the role play, you can assume control and say what the powered character is doing about never wanting to be alone. Key. Get your character sheet. I'm pretty sure I remember what I gave you, but I can't get your character sheet to come up. It should be that the uh, power character happens to be obsessed with music. 
And uh, whenever that would be relevant, you can assume a narration about what the Howard character is doing because it loves music. Hmm. And Blaze, uh, the uh, Powered character is going to be immediately bonded to Andy when you guys meet it. Uh, and that that clinginess to Andy, whenever it's relevant throughout the campaign, you're going to narrate. Okay. I'm going to cry. Uh, you're going right, to so... the Powered character. <laughs> What's that? So when you... Go ahead, Aaron. What was that? I just said that uh, probably Andy will bully the power yeah. character all the time. Oh. <laughs> so mean. Oh, oh so mean. Okay, oh my so, god, my heart. <laughs> so when 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 these things when these notes you said that they're attached to a certain character, really it's it's not that like Val knows that that the powered character wants us to go to Cybertropolis. It's that Aaron knows and is yes. going to role play that. Okay. Yes. All right. Now that's the sort of thing that I'm gonna, you know, I I would normally like reveal it and then assign it to somebody, but for logistics' sake, I'm just pre-assigning a bunch of them. Okay. Uh, so so the first time it wanting people to go to Cybertropolis, I'll I'll do that, but then from there on, it'll be Aaron's responsibility to keep that going. Okay. okay. Uh, and uh, since this is a narrative kind of a game, and uh, steely game master control of the campaign is just impossible and fruitless to try so i figure we will embrace the chaos and let you guys uh select some more uh traits or relationships to the group for the powered character uh you can either you can i i, I set up some charts uh you should be able to see them in uh, the macros personality traits and relationship to group uh each of you, uh, you know, will go in or in some kind of an order. Each of you pick either a personality trait or a relationship to the group. Uh, and if you don't like it, just keep rolling. You know, get something that sounds fun that you want to control. Uh, just for a tech standpoint, um, my roll twenty is showing the chat, so okay. um, someone else can roll for me, and I'll just watch it. Okay. All right, so why don't we do Sarah last then? So let's go around and do that same order we did. Uh, Brianna, then Danny, then Aaron, then someone roll for Sarah. I'm going to do relationship to the group. Okay. So I think you already have a personality trait, so you're going to add a new way it relates to the group. All right. Peace, buddy. And this is this is so hard for me to do it as to watch as a game master. It's like, but... It's it's the special campaign NPC. I I don't. What if it's something stupid? <laughs> <laughs> How is that even going to work? Um, am I doing this right? Um, to just it says to draw, and then it says draw blank card. So I press draw uh, blank card. Uh, no, it, it's on a rollable table. Oh, so, I get it. Okay. So so uh, either a personality trait or a relationship. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Da, da, da. Do you see where you're pushing? Yeah, I'm sorry. You're good. Yoink. Okay. So you can either <laughs> embrace that or you can say, screw that and let's go for another one. <laughs> like me, then yes. That yeah. is so perfect. I love it. That is so perfect. <laughs> All right. Oh, I, was, I was just remarking before that for three of our four characters, fight is our among our two highest stats. All right. So Brianna, it looks oh. like that's a thing. Go ahead and add that as a relationship to the group in, on your character. Okay. I love it. All right. So Danny, pick either a, a personality trait for the character or a way it relates to the group. I guess that uh, I also have a personality trait already. Oh, so I'll you, do you can get another one. Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll, it's no, up to I'll you. This, I'll, I'll do the relationship to the group Another though. relationship. So, okay. So I'm going to click this. Uh, um, the rollable table. I didn't make cards for it. Oh, although here it is. Here although it if is. you're when you're playing in person rather than online, they actually sell a uh, character deck and you can draw these cards. That's cool. 
All right, so that's either a thing or you can choose to pick again. No, nah, we'll we'll go again. That doesn't seem right. worship. <laughs> worship me <laughs> for Cybertropolis. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's supposed to say "but only" together, but yeah, that's uh, I mistyped that one. Yeah, I like that. That's fun. It's okay. a special destiny in Cybertropolis. <laughs> I, 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 I but destiny. you all have to come, or else it doesn't happen peacefully. Yes. Peacefully. Yes. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I'll write that down. All righty. All right, so Aaron, you, know, you could pick another personality trait for the powered character or another relationship that it has with the group. I think absolutely a personality trait. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I, I don't want to influence you, but I, I think that's hilarious. I, I love it is the worst part about it. So absolutely is scared of middle-aged men, middle-aged men, especially in suits. Yeah, because men in black are a, are a thing in, uh, <laughs> in this in this kind of a trope. So. Hands oh my up God. Up. And so I record that in my power section. Yes, as, power uh, this, this is a character trait that applies to the powered character. Uh, but whenever it would be appropriate, you say, hey, uh, powered character is scared of middle-aged men, especially in suits. This is what's going on right now. Okay. <laughs> Somebody want to roll okay. for Sarah? Yes, please. Uh, Aaron, or yeah, Sarah, do you want to do a character trait or a relationship to the group? Uh, character trait. All right. Aaron, would you roll for her? Sure. Character trait. Uh, sorry, I was typing out my other one. Roll. Uh, it is impulsive, unless <laughs> you would like Aaron to roll again. No, I love it that it's impulsive. Okay. I, I, I imagine this one being like, uh, we're all walking one direction. We're like, where'd he go? And then we like, it just walked off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. At any time it does something impulsive, then you can invoke your, uh, your trait that, you know, that you control that and narrate the, awesome. uh, whatever's going on. I don't think you even have to wait. I think you just take control. <laughs> Nope, we're not doing that. We're doing this. <laughs> just goes over, starts banging on a vending machine. Yes. Okay. Gently, Order. no violence. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, not as quarters. Please, vending machine, spit your delicious juices at me. Okay. What? <laughs> this is a kid's game, so it, it's totally <laughs> innocuous. Well, she said delicious juices. That's, that's, that's just that's how they do in Cybertropolis. Yeah. And now this is going to be a clip somewhere forever on the internet. Yes. You're welcome. Thanks, Brianna. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alright, so I think... I hate uh, you. We, we've got... Uh, you haven't met the character yet. Uh, kind of, kind of the way the game works is early in the first session. I'm, it's my my job to introduce the character to you. Uh, I'll probably reveal a psychic power uh, early on, and someone's going to control that. But as more psychic powers uh, get revealed, uh, more people will have more psychic powers they can use through the or cool. have the powered character use. Uh, when it comes to narrating, what the Powered character does. Uh, this is the the yes and you know rule of improv role play. Whatever has been established has been established. Uh, kind of kind of the one immutable rule though is you can't give it psychic powers. That's the game master gives it psychic powers. So uh, the way psychic powers work is it works a little differently than the other mechanics that uh, that you guys all have. Uh, so when it's making a, you know, like a, a flight check, it does it, you know, just the same way as you guys. It rolls whatever the dice is against whatever the DC I, I say is. Uh, but the, the psychic powers work on a different mechanic. Whoever is controlling the character will roll two uh, four-sided die against the number I give. And uh, it has its own meta currency called psychic energy uh, that then can be used in the way adversity tokens are used. Okay. 
so uh, any last thoughts you guys have about the characters before we kick it off? I think this is really fun. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Uh. All right. So yeah, this again. This is uh, Danny and I were kind of talking about this offline. We're we're outside our comp you know, our, our experience, you know, with uh, cooperative uh, role playing games. Uh, it's usually game master says this is what happens. Characters say, well, this is what we do about it. Game master says this is what happens, and and back and forth. Whereas this is going to be, uh, yeah, you, you are all kind of like partial game masters. You you're 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 saying what happens. So this will be weird. This will be fun. <laughs> It's basically the whole game is that awkward moment when the GM goes, okay, role play. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kick us off with uh, setting, a, uh, setting a scene for you. The library of Nikola Tesla High School is almost empty this Saturday morning. Rows burdened with countless books, atlases, and magazines sprawl left and right from the main entrance in circular wings until they meet at the back separated only by a discreet emergency exit. A hand-painted banner featuring a childishly painted fightin' crawdad still hangs, proclaiming a welcome back to school to the student body despite these weeks since summer break ended. Ms. Blackburn, the coiffed and bespectacled woman whose sole joy seems to be to tell kids to be quiet in the library, is absent uh, from her counter near the library's entrance. Likewise, the few rooms joining the main hall are all dark. The only other presence here in this lifeless place is the guidance counselor, Mr. Henderson. He seems just as agitated about spending his Saturday here as you do. He's in the same polyester suit you always see him in. It can only be described as puke yellow, and it has to be older than any of you. He wears his hair like he's in the military. A high and tight that almost hides the fact that his temples are thoroughly overrun by gray, as if the dark hair of his flat top were the only color he had. A looming abstract modern art statue would cast shadows down on you as you sit at the table in the center of the open library, but the fluorescent lighting just seems to flood the library with ambient light that somehow seems to come from every direction at once. Sitting around the same table with you, enduring Mr. Henderson's pointed finger and words, are the other kids sharing your fate in Saturday detention. No, you can't leave for lunch. No, you can't even leave to go to the bathroom without getting his permission. He finishes by dropping a bombshell. Before you leave at the end of the day, you each owe me a thousand word essay about why you're in detention and what you learned by being here. <sighs> So I'll, I'll start with uh, having each of you, you don't have to like explain it to each other, but explain it for the yourself and the audience and the group. Uh, what it is, uh, what, what reason you have all day Saturday detention? Why are you here? Why am I here indeed? Mm. So what did Andy do that uh, got him all day Saturday detention. Uh, oh, um, the origin of his backpack um, during uh, during the kind of pep rally back uh, for school um, when they were given uh, out those uh, promotional drawstring bags and like t-shirts mm -hmm. and stuff. He uh, got in front of somebody and like like pushed them down the bleachers to get <laughs> to get okay. it. Yeah. All right. I'll get you detention. Indeed. What about the rest of you miscreants? I bet something... the the um, I bet the uh, the school fat kid that he couldn't uh, jump from uh, the um, roof of the gym onto the roof of the rest of like the school that's attached. Um, yeah. I could do it. I don't know what the big deal was. Yeah. Okay, so what's the school's fat kid's name? I think it's T Todd? T T Todd. Tim? I don't know. What does it matter? So, well, what happened to Todd when he when he tried it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
gravity was not his friend. <laughs> he he fell Success? No. he fell in the dumpster that was uh oh uh down between the in the alley between Riptod. <laughs> Smells well, like garbage he did now. It someplace, at least he did it someplace where he wouldn't like hurt himself when he landed, yeah. right? I mean, like, yeah, he's fine, and you know, he's probably used okay. to trash. It's like his house, right? Wow. Yeah, well, he's a fat kid. Nobody wow. likes him anyway. He should be used to that, Cat. right? Wow, wow, man. Starting off strong, wow. folks. All right. This is this is why Nikki hates all of you. <laughs> okay. Um, mean to kids because they're bigger than you. Ah, it's messed up. Well, Nikki's in, in detention because she had her headphones on in class. Well. And uh, and it took probably about four times for her to realize that the teacher was uh, calling on her to, um, to, well, maybe to answer a question at first, but uh, eventually to take her headphones off, um, which she kind of did. Yeah, well. Yes. Not, not to so. the teacher's satisfaction, clearly. Obviously not. No. Okay. No. How about how about Val? It is. I am innocent. I am totally, totally innocent. Okay. Well, I was there. I was. I was taking pictures of this competition that Blaze had set up, and they brought <laughs> me along. They they thought I was instigating, and I, I was totally just there. I was just taking pictures of the guy falling into the dumpster. Innocent. I, I didn't plan this at all. It's a good thing there's no internet because it, it wouldn't have been your fault for uploading them to the internet. Exactly. Okay. We suck, guys. <laughs> Woo, Cue so breakfast nice. club music. Exactly. Okay, so Mr. Henderson uh, has, has dropped the bombshell. Uh, each of you owe a thousand word essay. Uh, he tells you, I'm going to be in my office right down the hall. I don't want to hear a peep out of you, miscreants. When they ask Do they for have a thousand to be words? a thousand different words? Uh, let's see. As a game master, I got to check your character's last name again. Uh, Jackson. He says, no smart, no smart talk out of you, Jackson. I give an arm pump when they okay, ask for a thousand so all words. The, so all the same word. Got it. No, no smart talk. <laughs> okay, I'll be the seeing you next. Words. I'll be seeing you next week, Jackson. If that's what you do. Uh, he leaves uh, a ream of paper on the table, and he huffs off to the to the entrance of the library. Uh, he puts the door stop down so the door's open and he can hear any shenanigans uh, coming out of the library should you engage in them. And he uh, goes into his office just a few doors down from the library. I lean back on my chair, um, like so that it's back on uh, the back two legs yep. and grab my football out and uh, just start tossing it in the air and catching it. All right, give me, uh, this is a pretty easy thing, especially for you. Let me, let's, let's break out the mechanics here. The sample difficulty ratings. Uh, flight is kind of like the agility. So uh, we'll say difficulty rating two, and that's a task that should be all but guaranteed. You haven't met my oh. die rolls. <laughs> Yes, well. <laughs> That's a mood. <laughs> so basically, Blaze has to roll a flight check. A two is a success, because I said DC two. Awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, you, uh, so yeah, go ahead uh, and narrate your, because uh, I, I was about to say, yeah, you almost tipped over, but yeah, you, uh, you, you narrate. Yeah, so I uh, reach into my backpack, grab my football, lean back, put my feet up on the table, um, and just start tossing it in the air and catching right. it and passing the time. Right. I Thank try you. not to excitedly run up and grab some paper because I get the right and yeah, somebody's well, going to read it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right there at the, it's within arm's reach. You're, you're all sitting at the same table there together. And so I, 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 I walk 
fast walk up to grab some sheets and then hurry back to to start my masterpiece. Okay. Did you just bring some for everyone? What? So for everyone. Oh, to pay fine, for, fine, for fine. I, I go up and I I grab a whole bunch. I'm like, this guy just do a good job, okay? Then you Thank have to you, be I here again. You. What? Write the same word a thousand times. Come on, I dare you. She takes a piece of paper and takes out her pen. Uh, well, what word? <laughs> but. <laughs> Meet me halfway here. If I'm going to do this, it's at least got to be a good word. Why are you even here? Aren't you like in elementary school or something? I don't know. Can you throw that football farther than the ceiling? Yeah, I think everyone in town knows that. Okay, what word do you want? That You want a big word? Totally misses the point. You're supposed to tell me the word. You should be disenfranchised. Did we ask? Well, you weren't coming up with anything. I did. I came up with something great, actually. Um, but what? Do a cuss. Do it. Oh my god. Do a cuss? Seriously? <laughs> Disenfranchise. You have like five. Lame. Oh. Your hand's gonna with hurt that. right in that a thousand times. Hands All gonna right. hurt right in anything a thousand times. Yep, yep, indeed. But you're you're starting to do it, so uh, give me a grit. That sounds like a grit task. And... All right. So since this is a sort of a, a planned action, then uh, then I can what just uh, take half. Uh, yes, I believe that's right. Uh. I think keeping your focus together for this, I'm, I'm going to say a six is the difficulty. Okay, well, so her grit is the D20. So if I just take half of that, it's 10, which wins. Or All right, so you're, so, yeah, you're, you're able to focus, yeah. For, yeah, right, she just that's... throws her headphones on, you know, and, and just, you know, her head just starts going to whatever she's got playing on her Walkman. Uh, and... Uh, and she's uh, she just starts writing disenfranchisement. I uh, I a bunch I, I, of look, times. I look at Andy and I go, "Hey kid, what?" <sighs> Andy starts Andy starts folding it up into small, small, small triangles. I did it, and I'm so proud of myself for remembering how nice. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll uh, I um, I start flicking it uh, to you to make a goal. Okay. Andy's gonna every time you do it, he's gonna swat it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a give me a flight, Andy. Okay. First roll, folks. Let's see what happens. Flight, you said? Yep. Whoop. There you go. Oh, uh, I'm gonna say six. I haven't even seen the roll. So ah. So yeah, you. Uh, so go ahead and narrate uh, you failing in uh, swatting it away before. Andy uh, has very, very, very poor depth perception. Um, and so uh, when he does it, like he's he's like trying to hit it, but it like ends up hitting him in like the face or in his shoulder or something every time it happens. Okay. Um, do I get an adversity token though? Uh, you you get an adversity token because you failed. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it sounds like you got pegged in the face by uh, the paper football. Oh. <laughs> Poked right, right in the eye. eye. <laughs> oh, when that happens, he's gonna he's gonna take it. He's gonna throw it back at Blaze. Like you freaking dingus! Like why'd you like? <laughs> you hit me. 
You dingus. <laughs> All right, well, you hear a voice uh, coming from down the hallway. It's Mr. Henderson yelling from his office. It's an awful lot of noise coming from the library. Shh! You're in a library! <laughs> all right, what is Val this doing? Is, this is the smart-ass kids we all wanted to be when we were in yeah. high school, but we probably yes. weren't. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm going, like... You gotta be kidding me! Like I just want to get out of here. I, all right, I I just hit, head down and just start writing. Like, all right, <laughs> give me uh, give me a brains to stay focused on the the task. Uh, we'll say uh, uh, six. That sounds fair. That's what I've been giving everyone else. I'm skilled at journalism. Do I get a plus one? Uh sure. Okay. I think the skilled means you automatically pass. But that's your penal essay is not a journalistic thing. I'm not gonna say so. <laughs> All right, I'll take away the one. I'll give you the plus one, but yeah. It's, so with the plus one, you're a six. So you're you're staying focused. You're doing uh, something that oh, actually I keep doing it. You, you narrate. Uh, so I I continue to to write about the 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 wrongs that were done to that. Poor, poor Todd um, being taunted into, mm -hmm. against his will, to leap across buildings. Uh, luckily, not taking too serious of an injury, and, and how Blaze should probably say sorry, but probably won't. By the way, I totally don't know if his name is actually Todd. I just made it up. Well, it's, it's it, his, name, his name is Todd now. So, But what if his name is actually like Tom? Because well, like if, if you playing, Blaze know doesn't name. know his name, so like yeah, you're you're, you're the player. You Tom, make it up. You can say his name was Tom, but Sarah's Blaise the player know might know his name, but Blaze okay. as the character right. probably doesn't give a shit. So so which is it then? Does is it, is does it, Val it, know his name? So is his name Tom or is it Todd? Uh, I think his name is Tom, but we call him okay. Fat Todd because it. Cause, cause we fucked it up. Just, just because he gets under his skin. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not fat, and I'm not Todd. <laughs> okay, whatever, Fat Todd. So 100, percent this is us channeling like asshole kids. Because <laughs> that is not okay. Right. We right, we try go. not to be the assholes in our real life, but we're trying to bring yeah. you guys in and and provide good entertainment. So if that means we've got to be dicks, then. I'm fine with that. I think we've all seen South Park. We know how kids really are. I apologize to all people named Tom that I now have referred to as Fat Todd. Um, I, I apologize. I was going to go down the road. Not Todd or Tom. Like, his name's Michael. Like, <laughs> yeah, his name is Michael. Not even close to Todd. <laughs> Whatever, Todd. Like that's not even close. Why do you keep calling me Todd? Yeah, you can make that. You can make that part of your essay. It's like it's just so wrong to just make a name like that. Wow, that's that's something. Um, that's amazing. What are we supposed to be writing about? Uh, apparently, a thousand disenfranchisements. Yeah. Well, what are we supposed to? I, I would respond if you ask. Like, well, we're supposed to talk about like why we're in here and why we won't do it again. All right, yeah. Okay, she continues writing disenfranchisement. <laughs> okay, so Andy, uh, you're getting a little beep from your backpack. Uh, you recognize that that's your sister's Tamagotchi is asking to be fed. It's time it's to feed. It's the 90s. It's the 90s, yeah. <laughs> it's time to feed. We kind of, uh, he'll, he'll dig around um, and... Um, you just hear little tiny things just all in there. Um, pulls a, a fry out, eats it, and <laughs> grabs, grabs the Tamagotchi out. Ow. This kid is gross. <laughs> so what's the little creature's name? Um, let's see, it's his sister's. Um, so she named it, she named it like something really sweet, like, like okay. Buddy. Um, but he just calls it like you or like stupid or something like that. Okay, so what's his sister's name for it? 
Uh, buddy. Buddy. Okay. All righty. Uh, and, and explain what a Tamagotchi is, just in case there's anybody watching who didn't live through the 90s. That would be me. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Shut up! Right after Pet Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I'm entirely equipped because I know like the basics, but please help me, guys. No, you LCD struggle. Pebble. You brought this on yourself. No. <laughs> no. No. Please help I, me. I hear you. I hear you calling us old, and uh, I'm not. So no, I swear uh... to God. I just, <laughs> I just need help. I'm sorry. I'm 19. It's a, it's a thing. It's a, you know, it was a little, little toy. Yeah, that yeah it's, it's like um, Giga Pets yeah, were like better. A, like a keychain yeah. with a digital display, and it's got really crude little graphics. And it's got like eight buttons, so you push the buttons, and you can like feed it, and wash it, and clean up its poop, and make it go to sleep, and play with it, and it makes it all he uh, healthy and happy, and you want it to live really long. Um, but if you neglect it, they die. Yeah. Oh, so you can kill it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a reason I never got one. That's good to know. <laughs> Putting that in the back of my brain. Is it dead already? Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's begging no. for food. <laughs> no, he's feeding it. Oh, so he... <laughs> he's, he's feeding it. He's feeding it, yep. Yep. <laughs> Surrounded by poop. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's a little, like... Uh, this 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 version for our game it'll be like a little eight pixel uh, or eight bit display, uh, like a little cat thing with uh, lobster claws for the front hands and uh, like a beaver tail. That's that's your little digital monster that you're you're feeding. It does a little dance to thank you. Oh, can um can my Tamagotchi be um the the powered character? Uh, well. <laughs> It just so happens that uh, it's you've never seen a Tamagotchi with uh, like a speaker attached, but there's a voice emanating from the keychain, and it says, "Thank you, Andy." Uh, he's, so yes, he's... so yeah. Actually, the plan was all along that it would be a Tamagotchi creature with the powered character. So I was so happy that to see that you had one in your backpack. Are you serious? And, and whoever sees that it's bound bonded to Andy, that's why, because Andy just fed it. That's yeah, that's me. I just had to take a moment to go. So did this just so, happen? <laughs> so so what is so how does Buddy react to, to Andy feeding it? Um, he says, like you said, he goes, "Thank you, Andy," and then you hear, "Om nom nom nom." Uh. Uh, Andy's gonna kind of look around, like, uh, who who's futzing with me right now? Like, oh, well, you guys have probably never seen a Tamagotchi do that before, but you know, maybe this is like a new one or something. I didn't know they could do that. Whoa! I don't dude. even know what's going on. Uh, 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 he's gonna like like throw it in the back. <laughs> Ouch! Hey, who's doing that? It's not funny. Oh, you hear a voice from the hallway. Uh, Mr. Henderson says, don't make me come down there. I said, be quiet, you miscreants. Yeah, could you get here in time with your old legs? <gasps> oh. you, you hear like something fall over in his office, like a heavy thump. Uh, and he comes rushing out and there's like papers trailing after him. He, he looks furious. Uh, he comes storming into the lib into the library. Uh, Andy, uh, your last name is Tully, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Says, given, Tully, given that you just bought yourself that... another visit here next Saturday, I'll be seeing you in a week. And he just kind of like. Uh, of course, somebody happens to know that. Uh, Buddy, is, which is we've resolved as the power character's name, is afraid of middle-aged men in suits. Does Buddy see at this point? Because Buddy was in the bag. Which... I, I'm sure he can hear it. 
Uh, there's a, a scream from your back. Hey! <laughs> go, 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 go. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, Mr. Henderson, uh, here's this digital, you know, like a little electronic voice, you know, screaming from your bag. He, he reaches over and takes your backpack, Andy, and walks back to uh, his office. You hear sobbing from the bag. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and he he... says, "You know what you're supposed to be doing. You get back to work writing." Andy, don't abandon me. (laughs) (laughs) Don't leave me. Guys, you guys, you gotta help me get my backpack back. Okay. (sighs) I I've got an idea. I can pretend that we're going to do something for the school paper based on him and that like I need to interview and take a picture and then you can use that time to go get your bag. I was talking like like fire or something but <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean I mean if you want to be here the rest of your life I don't want to be here the rest of my life. I think if you make something, if you light something on fire, you won't be here for the rest of your life. I think they'll find a different place for you. If you want, sure. I'm the sneakiest one of all of you. You distract him, I can sneak in and get it. You're the sneakiest one of all of us. Looks around at all of you? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, Fine, that's that's fine. Like I, I like I said, I I can go convince him. All right, if you're so sure, go on, kid. Okay, so so your your plan is to try try to talk him out of his office and draw him somewhere else. Do I understand that correctly? Yeah, I I want to talk to him and go like, well, I was thinking about doing. You've been here forever as and just a, a part of the institution, and you you're gonna. Like, I got to get a picture out in front of the school with you so that I can write my article on you. Um, okay. And I've got questions. All right. So, this sounds like a charm. Uh, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 15 because he's in such a bad mood and you're supposed to be writing your assignment. So, I think that sounds like a task where success is extraordinary, but within the realm of plausibility for the truly skilled. Um, I'm intuitive. Would that help me sort of read? Uh, yeah, I suppose, uh, I'll let you spend, uh, the, oh, you don't, okay. Well, uh, since you guys are working together, I will let somebody else spend on your behalf then, because I know at least two of you have, uh, inspiration or inspiration whatever it's called <laughs> adversity tokens adversity <laughs> uh and that could trigger your your intuition and i'll i'll lower the dc down to 13 so we're going to spend yes take it okay all right so while while you're doing the talking who's going to sneak in and uh steal the backpack back uh the one that's good at everything all right, so uh, let's do the charming first. So while it. this is all going on, Nikki's going to pull her headphones down. Uh, music's still playing off of them, but she's just going to kind of lean back and watch the shenanigans. In okay. Suit. All right, so Val, you are successful. Go ahead and narrate uh, you talking Mr. Henderson out to the front of the building to take the picture, whereas uh, I'm going to have... Blaze, uh, if you're the one doing the the sneaking, uh, since he's not there, but he could still see you walking through the hallway. Uh, I'm gonna say this is only be a six for the for the flight. So I go to Mr. Henderson and say, you know, I, you've been you've been a part of this the Fighting Crawdads school forever, and you know, I think you know even Nikolai Tesla would be impressed with what you you've done with. The kids and I want to, you know, we, we've decided we're writing an article. I need to take a picture though of you out in front of the school to, to put as part of that article. And you know, I'm just, I just have to say, like, 
I again. appreciate what you're doing. All right. Well, Mr. Henderson's mood Im- improves, and he's like, okay, well. All right, Val, I always knew you were one of the good ones. So he he comes with. Uh, meanwhile, Sarah, you are successful. So go Sorry, ahead and who? narrate uh, uh, Blaze's successfully uh, uh, going in after Mr. Henderson leaves the office. All right. So um, uh, I kind of like stay behind the doorway and wait until... Um, Val uh, kind of leads him away, and as they're uh-huh. walking, I try to match their footprints or footsteps, and then okay. I just dart into his uh, office, grab, uh, take a look around, grab the bag, and uh, right. dart back yeah. out. Yeah, it's just laying right there on his desk. Okay, so uh, this might be a good spot to leave off because we're at fifty-nine minutes after the hour. So, uh, all right, yeah. this was fun. I can't wait for more. Oh my god. I feel like at the end of ep- every episode I'm going to have to apologize for being a dick. <laughs> well, who knows? It, it, this this might be uh like the the heroes uh arc where you you get reformed I hope so. I always love those. Yes, through the through the through the power of the magic Tamagotchi. Val, yeah. I, said, I I I was trying to keep a straight face when I whenever I saw that you wrote Tamagotchi down on the on your backpack because I was totally going there, even if you hadn't written it down. See, like, so I was like, this is perfect. This is see, perfect. Like, I totally did it as just like a meme. I yeah. like just like did it as a joke. And I was like, well, he's got a top of Gachi. And now look well, yeah. what our guy. Yeah. Whatever we decided we're gonna do this in the nineties, I'm like, okay, the power character is gonna be a sentient Tamagotchi. I, I only <laughs> believe you how because of how quickly you describe the Tamagotchi. <laughs> yeah. Like, she was like telling you were just like yes it's a cat thing with with claws with like claws and then and then a beaver yes. tail and i was like you, thought like about you this. had that in your back pocket somehow i yeah i really enjoyed this and and i i feel like uh i've seen this show before so uh nikki since you and blaze are in the same uh grade you know something's gonna happen there yeah the the something that doesn't or does. So, <laughs> so Danny, now you have your character notes, like an eight-bit uh, cat with, with lobster claws and a beaver tail. Eight-bit yeah. cat, lobster, lobster claws and a beaver tail. Yeah. Uh, there it goes. All right. Well. All right, guys. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll uh, we'll see you next Wednesday, and we'll explore what happens with uh, this group of kids and, uh, and a strange new friend. And yeah, Wednesday's at eight. Gotcha. So thanks for joining us today on a Thursday. I'm saying this on Wednesday as we record, but metagaming on a Thursday. Um, so uh, we'll see you guys next week. Woo! All right. <laughs>